the well-known radio and variety entertainer Nosmo King. Not forgetting Hubert. Hello, Hubert. Hello, Colonel. You're looking very pleased with yourself about something. Yes, I'm feeling pleased with myself. Didn't I tell you? I did an offer from one of the newspapers for the story of my life. Splendid. How much did they offer you? 35 shillings, a castle in Spain, and a couple of bungalows at Frinton. Frinton? Yes. Yeah. Why Frinton? Because the wife's fond of shrimps. Then why not start then? Oh, she doesn't like them as much as that. Tell me, Hubert, have you ever done anything on the stage besides this Hubert business with me? Have I ever done anything on the stage? As a matter of fact, I belong to a dramatic society. Oh. And I'm playing my first part next week. Oh, really? It's the part of a man who's been married for 20 years. Man who's been married for 20 years? Yes. Well, that's all right to start with. Perhaps after you've had a bit of experience, they'll give you a speaking part. What made you join this dramatic society? I did it because my girl wanted me to. You see, I'm very, very much in love with her. And after all, love is the most important thing in the world. Eh? I said love is the most important thing in the world. Oh, no, Hubert. Love is not the most important thing in the world. Well, what is? Holes. Holes? Yes. Have you ever thought what a lot of pleasure and happiness would be denied the world if no one had invented holes in the tops of bottles? How are you going to get the beer out? You've no idea what an important part holes play in the running of the universe. Really? I shouldn't have thought it. Of course you wouldn't. You've never studied the subject, but I have. And I'll tell you a few things that'll surprise you. Do you know there are 30,000 people employed in Switzerland today making holes in Gruyere cheese? There are 2,407 men employed in this country minding holes in roads. There are three million dollars earned every year by American dentists filling holes in American teeth. And you sit there and tell me that love is the most important thing. Why, you don't know what you're talking about. Look at the effect it has on our natural prestige. Oh, you know that Englishmen are supposed to be the best dressed men in the world, don't you? Can you imagine an Englishman getting ready for a Masonic banquet and finding no armholes to put his arms in and no buttonholes to put his buttons in? And arriving at the banquet done up with safety pins and red tape, he'd look terrible. And then at 3 a.m. in the morning, trying to get into his house, vainly trying to put a latch key into a hole that isn't there. Why, he'd be there for hours and hours. He'd starve to death before he got home. And you say that love is the most important thing. Look at the effect on music. We hear the music goes round and round and it comes out here. How the devil's it going to come out here if there's no hole for it to come out of? Imagine Henry Hall playing a piccolo solo on a piccolo with no holes in. It'd sound terrible. Worse than the distressed arias in the foundations of music. And then look at sport. Can you imagine Wembley on a cup final day? A hundred thousand people packed into the stadium and five minutes before the kickoff, they can't find a hole in the football bladder to pump the air in. There'd be a revolution. Yes, I never thought of that. Oh, of course you didn't. And the next time you ask your mother to sew a button on your shirt, you just try and figure it out how long it would take her to thread the cotton in the needle if there were no hole in the needle. It would take her a lifetime and then she couldn't do it. Love is the most important thing in the world. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Hubert. You look quite intelligent in your photographs, too. I can't understand it. Still, I'll forgive you if you'll do me a favour. What is it? Lend me ten pounds. Ten pounds? Yes. What do you want ten pounds for? To get me out of a hole. Oh, I'd almost forgotten. Have you heard the story of 288? No. What is the story of 288? I don't think I'll tell you. Why not? It's too gross. Didn't expect that one, did you? No. Well, now we've got to do something to finish up. What shall we do? I suggest that you do one of your impressions. You remember the broadcast we did a few weeks ago? Yes. Remember all those thousands of fan letters we got for those impressions of yours? I think you ought to do one. What, what do you think? Well, I don't mind. How many, how many thousands of letters did we get? I forget. you remember? Two. Two thousand? No, no, no. Two postcards. Two postcards? Yes. Oh, I knew it was more than one. Anyway, what shall we do? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll do Robertson Hare. In all right, and then I'll show you how I should imagine one of the old-time musical artists would say the same words that you say. How's that? All right. Then. Right. Oh, good morning, ma'am. Oh, no, thank you. I popped in at the village fountain on my way down, and I wet my whistle there. Oh, dear. All oh, very irregular. That's very fine, Hubert. Now, this is how I should imagine our old friend Horace Kelly might say it. Good morning, ma'am. No, I won't have anything to drink, thank you. I called in at the village fountain and wet my whistle there. Do you want anybody for your new films? Do you want any sword swallowers? Yes, I can swallow swords. In fact, I'm that peckish I could swallow anything. Well, that's all I know about Horace Kenny. Come on, you, but let's go and have a drink. Come on, boy. <laughs>